there's a lot of people who say, you know, Paul Francis, why does he write these letters to James Martin? And why does he invite him over and talk to him and do all this and that? I, if it, honestly, from what I can tell, it really looks like Pope Francis, his impression of Father James Martin is that Father James Martin is trying to reach this group of people with a message of love and hope and to know that God is there and he loves them and he wants to give them the good news of Jesus and the church is there for him. I honestly think that Pope Francis sees Father James Martin in that light. And so in that sense, or if he sees them in that way, I could understand why Pope Francis would write him a letter and say, hey, I wish you well. Or uh, I could understand why he would invite him and have a nice conversation with him. Because if that is his impression of what Father James Martin is doing, then, OK, that makes sense. But there is a question that can be raised here. Is that really what Father James Martin is accomplishing? Or are there things that Father James Martin has said that goes beyond just merely trying to reach out to this group of people with a message of love and hope? Is he not, in some cases, condoning the sin and advocating for a change in church's teaching of the sin? And is he not, whether he intends it or not, I don't care. And at the end of the day, is he not confirming people in their sin? Whether he intends it or not, different question. At the end of the day, is that what Father James Martin is doing? Is that what he is executing? A confirmation of people in sin rather than calling them to a life of grace and God's mercy and forgiveness. And away from bondage to sin. I think some people can legitimately say, well, I'm not so sure that Father James Martin is reaching people with the message of what the church is actually trying to tell him. It seems like he's confirming people in their sin, whether he intends it or not, whether he's just, he misunderstands things, he's deceived, whatever, or he's actively just trying to undermine the faith and confirm people in their sin, regardless of intention, some people are going to say, but at the end of the day, this is what he's doing. And I have seen some things from, from Father James Martin that makes me think, okay, he's not merely just reaching them with a message of love and hope and telling them the church loves you and God loves you and God God's mercy and grace is here for you and the church is here for you. I'm seeing Martin saying more than that. I've seen him saying things that really seems to cross the line and goes over into confirming the sin and goes over into confirming people in this way. And that's a problem. Now, maybe if there's something out there that would dispel me of that impression, I'm open to hear it. Father James Martin watches this and he says, Michael, you misunderstood me. OK, I'm I'm open to hear it, but I have a lot of questions based on some things that I've heard from Father James Martin that I need an explanation for. Um, so I understand some people where they're coming from, like this doesn't seem wise of Pope Francis to invite him over to send him these nice messages, because doesn't he know that Father James Martin has said this and done that? Well, I, I totally get that, and and I agree. Yeah, it isn't wise, but the question is, does Pope Francis even know that? He doesn't even use social media. His social media account is run by other people. He did a video the other day on Hulu. He doesn't use social media at all. He doesn't know anything about it. So I honestly don't think he's ever seen the side of Father James Martin that we have seen on social media. I think for one reason or another, he's been sheltered from that, either by happenstance or deliberately. He hasn't seen some of the things that probably we've seen from Father James Martin. I don't think Pope Francis has seen that. Now, again, some might offer the criti uh, further criticism here and say, well, that means that Pope Francis is being negligent, maybe. Uh, others might say, well, that means that Pope Francis is unwise to go and endorse a person he hasn't really looked much into, maybe. Maybe uh, that means Pope Francis has bad advisors around him. Maybe all that may be true. Um, but is Pope Francis somehow trying to actively confirm people in the sin of homosexuality or something like that? No. And in fact, there's evidence to the contrary. Because Pope Francis is the same one who says, referring to homosexuality, it is a sin. That is a direct quote from him. It is a sin as is any sexual act outside of marriage. That is a direct quote from Pope Francis. And I would add to that. Yeah, 
Yeah, any sexual act outside of marriage is a sin. But I would add to that. But, Pope Francis, I do want to remind you that some acts outside of marriage are more grave than others. I, I do want to add that. I do think that's important to note. Um, because there are going to be some people who try to equate all sexual sins in the exact same category of gravity. And no, that's not the case. Even according to scripture, that's not the case. There are some sins that cry out to heaven. There are some that are more grave than others. Um, so I do want to point that out, but he does also then rightly note, but yes, though it is a grave sin and it is grave matter, we do need to take into account a person's level of knowledge and consent and, you know, consent of the will and stuff like that. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, though in this particular case, I would say, um, I think their conscience is, is telling them that it's wrong. And so even if they have an ignorance of what scripture says, I think their conscience is telling them. And then also how, how much consent of the will does a person have when they really engage in these acts? Obviously that's going to vary. Um, but I, I certainly think it's debatable to say that you would ever be at a point where a person can engage in this act and have zero, um, zero uh, culpability, you know, that their, their consent and knowledge and ignorance has been reduced to the point that they have zero culpability. I'm not so sure that that ever happens, to be honest, that seems a little um, contestable. So um, I, would, I would certainly challenge that, that impression. Uh, because he did go on and say something to that effect. He said, quote, one must also consider the circumstances which may decrease or eliminate fault. Now, in general, that's true. When it comes to any kind of sin, you have you do consider things like um, a, a knowledge of when he says circumstances here, he's talking about consent of the will and knowledge of the intellect. And that's true. Ignorance can reduce culpability, lack of consent. Um, habit, things like that can reduce culpability. But I'm not so sure in the case of acting on same-sex acts that ignorance and habit or whatever mitigates the sin, I'm not so sure it's ever eliminated in that particular sin. Now, somebody might argue and say, oh, but here's how it could be eliminated. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm willing to hear that. But that one seems like a reach. So while, while Pope Francis, what he's saying generally is true, I'm not so sure that that applies here. So I think that we could offer some criticism of what Pope Francis said, because he did say that in a different letter that he wrote to uh, James Martin a while back. Um, Pope Francis said homosexuality is a sin. And, you know, Martin wrote to him and asked for clarification. And Pope Francis wrote back to Martin, it is a sin. I mean, he didn't change that. He didn't say, no, sorry, uh, Father James Martin, it's not a sin. No, he wrote to Father James Martin and said, it is a sin, as in any sexual act outside of marriage. But he goes on to say, one well, must also consider the circumstances which may decrease or eliminate fault, which again is generally true. I'm just not so sure how applicable that is to this particular sin. And that's my criticism of Pope Francis there. Um, but does Pope Francis really know where James Martin is at on these things, what all he's saying on social media. I honestly get the impression Pope Francis doesn't know and he kind of just thinks that James Martin is one of those guys who's just out there to bring the good news to this group of people and he just loves them and he wants to bring them a message of hope. And I don't know, maybe that's James Martin's intentions, but I'm not so sure that that's actually what he's doing in reality. So Reason to Theology is growing as a channel. As a result, there's been a number of increases in production costs. So if you're benefiting from RT, I ask that you consider supporting the channel. You can help out by contributing to the Help RT Grow fundraiser on GoFundMe. You could also consider becoming a member on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash reason and theology or become a channel member right here on YouTube. With either of these options, Patreon or a YouTube member, you'll get extra access to patron only content. You can also donate directly to RT at PayPal if you prefer that option. And you can find links to all of these resources and ways to support RT in the show description. God bless. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. See you next time. God bless.